physical game to open up with. Pretty sloppy game too, you know, just for a lot of it. Um, but I know you'll take a ugly win over an ugly loss. Um, just what do you think this type of game to start off the year did for y'all? I think it gives us a ton of usable film. You know, I, like I said, when we scheduled this game, that was not the team that was on the – that wasn't the roster that was on their website uh, when we scheduled this game a year and a half ago. Uh, you don't plan on opening a team against a team that's got three power five guards uh, coming in, you know. So I'm glad that we have it now looking back. I wasn't really fired up about it leading in. And anybody that heard me talk the last two weeks, if y'all were paying attention, I tried to tell everybody, do not think that this team was the – 348th ranked or whatever they had them at the RPI or those early starting teams. That was the team from last year. And with the, the the portal, the way it is and the job that she does, we've known coach Biller back from since we were recruited toll free. So I knew what we were in for. I knew their guards were going to be like that. And we were prepared for it. I, I'm glad we got tested. Um, obviously, uh, like I said, it's not the game we scheduled a, a year and a half ago. So I'm glad that we did survive it. Lots of mistakes down the stretch on uh, time management uh, shot selection from some of our young kids, some of our new players that hadn't been in that situation. Uh, so we get a chance to coach. Uh, I do think this is a team that will be able to be coached through wins. I don't think it's going to take a loss to get their attention. So um, uh, if, if somebody tries to drag me down, good luck, because it ain't going to happen. I'm I'm ecstatic that we were able to get out of this. With, I mean, we only turned it over 16 times in a game that had – okay, help me with the fouls. Is that 42 – that right, 29 and 13. They only turned it over 16 times in a game that physical. The way we turned it over, we'll fix. Those are all fixable ones, and I think the shot selection will come with a lot of a lot of film work and, and a little bit of coaching. And then talking about the transfers they have, I mean, you've seen Ja'Kayla Johnson for a while now, but, I mean, she got really hot in that fourth quarter. Just, I mean, a lot of that's credit to her making plays, but what do you think, I guess, of the on-ball defense and sometimes, too? I thought she took every one of us. To, it was somebody different every time. I don't have one person I could point at and say it was her fault. She started hitting some incredibly tough finishes around the basket. The four shots that she missed, I thought were going in. I mean, she could have very easily been 17 of 17. Sailor changed her shot once or twice, and I think Sasha may have blocked another one, but – uh, no, she got in the zone, and then they're late. We we lose her in transition, and I think we were up eight or nine. And then the next thing you know, we're sitting there talking about one possession game. So um, she was, like I said, we, we saw her last year and, and knew and played Bradford down in the Virgin Islands. And uh, I look at this roster, there's only, I think, three kids on their roster that were there last year. So it's a team that um, just pay attention to them. They're going to have a good year. And then last thing for me is, uh, I mean – Felt like the only thing really slowing Talia down was the foul trouble early. What did you think of her early, of just in her first game, having the ability to, the ability to score like that? I, you know, they're, they're, when you have Talia, Mack, and Sam out there, they're going to have to make a decision on who they put on who. And we felt like Sam had the best, or Talia had the best matchup to start. And I thought she got off to a great start. Was drew nine fouls, and you look over there now. They switched somebody off. Now Sam draws ten fouls. I don't know if you can count that as a double double, but man, it's got to be something. I mean, 10 drawn fouls and nine drawn fouls. That's 19 drawn fouls between the two. Uh, but Talia is made for that. I mean, that's why she came here. Uh, we didn't always know that it was, we were going to have Michaela. You know, when we signed Talia, we didn't know that Michaela was going to be here. But I said it in the press conference before the season, she earned her, her right to start by the way she defended. Uh, she can shoot it better than that. She'll, she'll be mad that she went nine of 13 from the free throw line. And she'll probably go back and look at a couple of shots and say, I could have done better there. She's extremely good in the film room. Uh, her and Mac and Sam have really gone from having to compete with each other in practice to now competing together and helping each other. So I'm anxious to see their continued growth. Uh, and I'm not going to go any further. I'm not going to let anybody wait to ask about Sailor getting 21 rebounds. Um, I have a position goal, Sailor, um, uh, with uh, Sasha and with uh, Christina that I want them to get 17 rebounds a game between them. I didn't mean that it had to be an individual deal. I mean, it was a group thing, uh, but they got 21. Christina got two and Sasha got seven. So that's 28, 29, that's 30 rebounds. And that's an area that we've been trying to focus on improving on uh, and to win that battle like we did. Uh, they get seven offensive rebounds but four of those were dead ball ones those aren't live ball rebounds so that's a pretty good job on the boards we made improvement there
creation then. <laughs> Go. <laughs> about Sailor? Yeah. Okay, yeah obviously, I, obviously, obviously, obviously she had some good efforts last year rebounding, but uh, 21 in a game against against Ayer is great. I mean, just talk about that a little bit more. Well, she goes after all of them. You know, that's the first point. Not everybody goes after all of them. She, is, she hopes every one of them, she's going after it to get them. The, the, the other three offensive, she didn't get very many offensive rebounds last year because of where we played her. Um, but she has a desire to do it. Um, she's got the toughness and the physicality to, to absorb the first hit and give the first hit sometimes. Uh, but I think it's just kind of who that kid is. When, you, when you've been around her family and you see how she's been raised, she's going to do tough things. And um, I don't want to have to play her 37 minutes a night. You know, I, I wanted to get – uh, Christina and I wanted to get Jenna in there, but I also don't want to put those guys in situations that that they don't they're not ready for yet. But Sailor kept saying she was fine, and I think she got tired one time in the third quarter. But other than that, uh, she told me she still had some gas left in the tank. But um, I mean, that's a hard thing to do to get. I mean, I had 21 rebounds my junior year, my whole year, not in one game, the whole year. Uh, I was, obviously wasn't much for rebound, but that was the number I had. So it just puts it in perspective. I saw Sailor make nine out of 10 threes after the game last night in here. Do you think maybe the, the rebounding took a toll on her offense? I, you know, for her, it's just getting, seeing a few go in. You've seen it. You saw it during the 10 days of exhibition. Everybody else in this room has been at practices to know that the day's coming when she goes five for five or four for five from there. I thought she took one that was too far out. Um, but somebody from the bench was yelling, shoot it, which is hard to not shoot it when one of your teammates yells, shoot it. Uh, but she can make it from out there. Her, you know, her, her shot is something I have zero concern about because I've seen it go in. Uh, it hasn't gone in like she wants it to go in. I know in games, but that time's coming. And if you can rebound, you're going to play. You know, I mean, that's, we, we've got to have that. And, um, you know, there was, uh, a lot of those were tough ones too. Coach, it seems like the past couple of years, you know, first team coming out the gate started, had really good guard play yeah. and coming in and getting 20, 30, 34 points. How do you think that's preparing the team moving forward, especially with how deep the SEC is? Well, I mean, just look around. We know it's coming. I'm glad we've got a bunch of games, 14 more, till we get there to um, figure out some schemes and some things because we are little when we do, when we play those three little fast ones. Um, but I, I think, for us, guard play in the beginning is always a little bit ahead of your post play, for sure. Uh, I thought Miriam gave us good minutes. Uh, that's the most minutes, I think, extended that she's played. And I'm going to really test, really, really test Kylie on this one. Um, but I'm not so sure that uh, Carly Keats didn't set an NCAA record for most free throws made as a designated free throw shooter. <laughs> I, I mean, it's I don't know how you find that out. It may be just one of those rules that we just say it's a, a record and see if somebody can prove us wrong, but um, it just kind of kept happening. Uh, it was crazy. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly, that's for sure. That's another record to look up. I also wanted to ask, uh, to ask the players, you know, how much y'all been implementing the press. For them to press y'all, how do you think that really helped y'all get through that those couple of minutes? Good, because we haven't really sat down and said we have this press offense. We've been working against ourselves. I thought our press early maybe partly partly led to some of their foul trouble, too. I think we got to their legs. Um, our strength and conditioning coach uh, and their staff, we have we have dove into the analytics of the the tracking that they use more than ever. Um and, and trying to give our kids enough practice to be able to play this number of minutes, but also to be able to recover. Um, so, you know, I, I think what we've done in the offseason prepared us for a, a night like that. Last thing for me, yep. of course, you know, Sasha's return and her being able yep. to come in. Just talk about that for a little bit. Well, just to suit up and be back out is a, is a win. You know, it's a win uh, to, to have a, a kid like that that um, – has been through what she's been through to come back out. I thought the crowd got, gave her a great ovation. Um, and she's going to just continue to get more comfortable and more comfortable getting back in. It is so hard to take any time off, but much less that much. And, and I thought she gave us a big lift uh, in lots of areas and we'll just continue to get stronger and better uh, every time we play again.
Speaking of crowds, there'll be a different type of energy in here on Friday. <laughs> yes, it will be. I th- yeah, I think, absolutely. Like seven thousand kids are coming. That's out what. Or something like that's that. what Elvis told me, and and I'm going to go on a campaign uh, starting tonight, probably tomorrow, because um, I'll wait. But if we had twenty six thirty tonight, I hope we can get that back to put on top of that seventy three hundred and get a, t- a crowd of ten thousand. We haven't had a crowd of ten thousand since a long time ago, and she's going to give you an exact date later on. It's been a while since we've had 10,000. So I'm going to implore everybody to take a early day off on Friday and, and get some earplugs, um, you know, uh, brush up on your Justin Bieber, uh, Taylor Swift and Katy Perry and um, learn the hand signals for baby shark. Cause it's coming. Uh, those students, Elvis and his team have done an amazing job. Uh, you know, I, I hope somebody has a little extra time on Friday to write the story about the number of people that volunteer to work our game on Friday. You're going to see head coaches out there. You're going to see high level administrators out there with signs up saying which school they're leading in and out. The number of people it takes to pull off the traffic flow, Julie Kane and her team, y'all, it is not an easy thing to do. Uh, I don't know if the concession stand has enough caffeine. Um, to get these kids are going to be out of school on a Friday, but it is, it is really, truly, uh, I've been starting this list of things you have to experience as a basketball player or coach or fan, the toilet paper game over at John Brown is one I've got on that list, but just go to any kid's day. It doesn't have to be ours. Just go attend a kid's day anywhere and just watch, uh, and the buzz and the sound, um, it, it's going to be, and, and just, Get ready. Murray State's another team that won 20-plus last year. I have a kid that will be up for mid-major All-American awards. Uh, She's on a bunch of watch lists. So, it'll be uh, be another game that will be fun to watch. And our our kids will cheer – those kids will cheer for them as much as they do for us. That's one thing I've learned in my years. They don't necessarily know what's going on. They know they're out of school. They know that they – if they get back to most teachers, what I've heard from is the rest of the day when they do get back from school is kind of a wash. So, I think Miriam Miriam told me that today that uh, she she thinks somewhere along in there they don't realize who they're cheering for. No idea. Cheering and everything. Oh no, no they 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 cheered last year when the other team scored. It's okay. It's all right. But uh, don't miss the baby shark and the dance offs because they are something. To see. Uh, speaking of records and things like that, you had forty four free throw attempts tonight, which. Funny enough, is the most since exactly a year ago today. Is that something like sustainable that you're looking for moving forward, or something that you've preached? Is anybody in here for the chalk talk? And before the game, I told everybody, I said this is going to be a high free throw rate game. Because we're going to drive it to the rim until they stop us, and we're going to get to that foul line. In our order, we want to shoot free throws, layups, and threes. And I'm going to go show them this stat sheet that says five for 30 because that just keeps – every time I look at the stat sheet, of all the good stuff, the one thing that keeps jumping out at me is five for 30. So one of two things has got to happen. The first number's got to go up or the second number's got to go down. One of the two. And tonight we took a few in transition that are going to keep me up tonight. But that's fine. We can teach. We can coach through that. I don't want to – I don't want to curb their excitement. We make more than that in practice. We'll carry it over at some point in time. But one of those two numbers has got to adjust a little bit. So, But the free throws, I love because it is what we always build around is free throws first. And then you had like a segment there in the second quarter where it seemed like nothing was going in for either team, I guess. For for a lot of new pieces that you're trying to phase into this, so was that kind of what was your message as that? Stretch was unfolding. The message was to hang in there because I felt like we were in better condition. I did feel like that. I knew we were tired too, but I kept looking over there going, they're more tired. So let's keep, rather than pull back and give them a chance to catch their breath, let's keep it going. And I think that did make a difference. Now, um, um, for us, finding the balance um, is going to be key for the rest of the way out, especially when, you know, it's way, way too early to start thinking about the SEC season way way too early we've got too many good quality opponents and big games but where every game we scheduled helps us get better for somebody in our league now this game again unintentionally helped us get ready for a lot of teams in our league because of their their depth their experience and their guard play and then last one from me you had a 
your two leading scorers tonight, I think one was making her college debut and the other had like 120 something starts. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I guess what, what's, what's it been like to see some of the older people like in game situation and communicate with the younger. It's an amazing girls. question. Deep. I like, I like that you came up with that. That's a good, good question. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, and, and I told Mac and y'all can ask Mac about this later in the year, but Max legacy here, guys, it's already cemented. I don't care what anybody says. She's won more games than anybody. I know she's going to have played a fifth year, but she did it in her four years. But part of her legacy is going to be turning this thing over to Talia and Sam next year. You know, we've been using this NASA, and I talked to them about she's your pilot, you guys are co-pilots, and y'all got to learn from her. So her big legacy is going to be going in there and showing Sam a few things and Talia a bunch. But for the fact that they could be the 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 two tonight that ended up the leading scores, uh, I think that's a really neat tidbit that I might not have caught if you hadn't have asked that question. So, great question. Uh, Lawrence, okay, she's fine. Go start practicing tomorrow. I just got the just walked out of the um, uh, training room, and her and Emery both are going to get to start practicing tomorrow. Uh, you know, we've been talking about a lot of depth. I didn't disclose a bunch of our injuries because I didn't want. Uh, opponents to have it, but we'll get some of our depth back that allows to press, I think, a little bit longer. I think we press probably 17 minutes tonight. We want to get that closer to 25. Uh, Lauren will be back in practice tomorrow, and Emory will be back with non-contact. So 